Hi. In this video, we're going to be talking about uh, the idle control valve. Well, speaking about the idle control valve, uh, it's not uh, just uh, the thing, uh, the matter of uh, this uh, component, it's uh, the matter of uh, the whole system in general. We have to take in consideration that uh, KE was not just uh, developed after K Jetronic and just uh, left like uh, that uh, in one and only version. Speaking about the KE Jetronic, we must uh, speak uh, about uh, let's say four versions uh, of uh, the system ke1 ke2 ke3 ke5 speaking about uh, the development uh, of uh, uh, this system there were some components uh, that uh, uh, have been undergoing uh, these uh, developments let's say it uh, like uh, that that were perfected one of them is the ICV. Let's talk about uh, the KE-1. The KE-1 was uh, the KE Jetronic version of uh, the system that uh, had been mounted uh, in uh, 190E but in the first and the earliest versions of the system, of the cars. That uh, version was uh, generally, so to speak, speak uh, like uh, the mechanical K Jetronic system. And uh, the only difference, let's say it like that, the only difference uh, between the K Jetronic and the KE-1 was uh, that uh, the system uh, had uh, the EHA the KE of course but that's not uh, now our topic our topic is the ICV in my earliest uh, literatures uh, I've been uh, studying about uh, the KE I saw one component and uh, I couldn't figure out uh, what it is because I didn't have that component and it turned out to be uh, the idle control valve. If we can see somewhere the idle control valve, the earliest version of uh, that component, we can see that uh, here on uh, my video about uh, the white 190E. So let's hear something for, from uh, Dobroslav, uh, what he can tell us about uh, the ICV. And uh, I use this occasion uh, to greet him. Greetings, Dobroslav. And also, the thing I wanted to tell you is I have a manual uh, idle control valve that, that has a screw in it. So when I screw it in, it lowers the RPM. When I screw it out, and it, it, it like goes, um, it, um, what is it called? It increases it. So here we can see that uh, the ICV had nothing in common with the ECU, but nothing concerning uh, uh, the idle as well as uh, the watt. As for the first version of the system, I can say uh, that uh, this uh, component uh, had uh, a bimetallic plate that uh, has uh, been warming up and uh, it uh, has uh, been uh, opening and closing the idle control valve. And as you could hear Dobroslav, uh, you can manually adjust your idle. There was uh, a screw for the flathead screwdriver and there you could adjust uh, your idle as you wanted. And now there were 
versions uh, with uh, AC. And if you had AC, then you had uh, an auxiliary valve. If you didn't have, you had also one. So there were two, two uh, of uh, these uh, valves that uh, served uh, that uh, if uh, the idle falls uh, too low, then uh, these valves could maintain uh, the, uh, the idle. One of them was uh, if you had some uh, additional consumers and uh, two of them if you had the uh, AC, by the way. If you didn't have these aux auxiliary air valves, then your engine would stall. And that was pretty much uh, everything for the KE-1. S KE-2 was featured, that was on the earliest versions of W124. We had a valve with three pins, this one. Now, for the first time, the ECU had been controlling something. And that something was called uh, what? S for the idle. The idle could still be adjusted manually. Now, if you see uh, the valve itself, it was thinner and longer, I believe. And uh, S. Uh, uh, it was uh, fully closed, that uh, metal part uh, fully closed uh, the valve, there should be something that uh, could, uh, could provide the engine with air. And uh, it was that bypass, uh, let's call it like uh, that, it was something uh, in this area was uh, that uh, ICV and as you see those spikes if you move them counter or clockwise then you could adjust manually idle again the full throttle or the wide open uh, tr throttle was controlled uh, by the ECU. As for the KE3 versions, now we have uh, the ICV the way we know it, how it uh, looks like. It was with two contacts and now for the first time the ECU had uh, full control over the idle both over the idle as well as uh, over the watt. And uh, now these are some uh, questions uh, I had about uh, that uh, stuff uh, with uh, the ICV. For example, as I start my car, and I have uh, the third version of the system, then uh, the ICV reacts the way as it uh, reacts. It raises uh, the RPM, and after some 30 seconds, it lowers them. Let's see. And... That's it. <laughs> Out of first time. <laughs> That's Mercedes.
And people ask, ask me, is it uh, normal? Why don't I get uh, that? Uh, is everything okay with my system? Well, as for all of you that don't have the KE3, that was uh, the version starting from uh, August uh, 88. You don't have to be worrying about that uh, because uh, your ICV does not uh, raise uh, the RPM and then lower them again. Everything is okay with your car, don't worry. Now we have uh, the ICV with uh, two pins and uh, those versions of uh, the ICV had uh, been mounted uh, on the cars both on M102, 103, 104, 116, 117, 119 uh, engines. On all of them. Now, the question. Could anything be manually adjusted on uh, the lastest version of the ICV? On uh, the one with two contacts? The answer is no. There is nothing you can do there. As a matter of fact, you can see there a threaded part, but I strongly recommend you not to touch that part. Don't touch that, don't make any readjustments there, nothing, because this part is uh, factory adjusted when uh, it happens to you that uh, your ECU fails then you will have to be able to run the car uh, to drive it further your car won't stop because if the ECU fails then the voltage on your ICV is zero volts, logically. And as the voltage on your ICV is zero volts, what do you think now? Is the ICV open or closed? There's the answer. For all of you that uh, thought that it was uh, closed. If you don't believe me, the picture is thousand words worth. Or however they say. As for all of you that uh, <laughs> are still with me, and that still didn't uh, quit this video. What is important for you to have steady idle on this part on which you cannot do practically nothing? The precondition for the adjustments are your sensors only. So, in order to have a, a steady idle, you must have the TPS functional, the cutoff switch functional, you must have the potentiometer functional, the lambda also, and of course, no vacuum leaks. The only thing you can do to improve the state of your ICV is to wash it. 
maybe the years do what they do and uh, the ICV starts budging and you can only uh, wash it and clean it nothing else you can do there is nothing absolutely nothing you can do on uh, that uh, part as you take it off from the engine try to test it with a 9 volt battery simply attach the battery on its contacts below and if you don't uh, hear a clack sound cleaning it with a brake or carb cleaner by spraying it inside and afterwards clean the valve with q-tips or soak it in diesel fuel for three hours approximately clean it again with q-tips and try them again with the thing with 9 volt battery you must get the clack sound if you don't succeed then you will have to replace the valve. The only idle adjustment is possible on the engines 116 and 117. How? Well, the, this is uh, not uh, uh, free information. Because of uh, one of uh, my, my subscribers, that uh, I have, I was charging the, never mind how much, but this information, if you want to hear it from me, is not for free. That's only concerning M116 and 117 engines. This, what I'm talking about the sensors, that's the last step. Always mechanics at first. And then, then we can talk about uh, the sensors. And then everything what I've been telling you now in this part, everything counts now. So my dear ones, if you enjoyed this video, then Please don't click uh, the button skip add, it is going to help me a lot. And till the next video, happy Mercedesing. Bye.